Hey everyone, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of the AWS Startup Showcase, Analytics and Cost Optimization. This is season three, episode two of the ongoing series covering exciting startups from the AWS ecosystem. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. Today I'm joined by CUBE alum, Eric Amwega, VP of Marketing and Operations at Rudderstack. Eric's here to talk about Rudderstack, getting the most out of your warehouse data lake investment. Eric, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Great to see you as well, Lisa. Tell the audience a little bit about Rudderstack. I see 30,000 plus sites and apps run Rudderstack. What's the solution all about? Absolutely. Uh, Rudderstack is a warehouse native uh, customer data platform that helps companies collect, unify, and activate uh, data. We'll go into each of those pieces uh, in a bit, but essentially it is, it is uh, a product that's been built over the last three years uh, to enable companies to make the most out of their data to deliver delightful customer experiences. Delightful customer experiences are all the rage. We all expect them, but talk to me about the impetus or the catalyst to launch Rudderstack. What were some of the gaps that you guys saw with legacy customer data platforms that you thought, we got to fill these? Absolutely, so when you look at the history of customer data platforms, you'd have to go back to the early uh, 2010s. And essentially in 20, you know, in early 2010s, uh, you had this products called Tag Managers. So Google Tag Manager is one of them. You have Tilium. And essentially what they did is that they enabled uh, companies to collect behavioral data from their website. Uh, just a very simple example, behavioral data from their website and send it to a, a destination to do something with that data, right? That was the first iteration of, of that. That was a one-to-one -one connection where you're collecting data once and sending it to one destination. And then you'd have to have multiple tags uh, to do that. Say for example, you needed to send data to an email service uh, provider and then you also need to send data to a product analytics tool. Those would be two different tags, right? Now, that was uh, an innovation at the time, uh, but over time you had uh, traditional CDPs that were more complete end-to-end um, -end workflows for customer data. Uh, you had, uh, you know, segment, you had M particle uh, around the 2015 uh, timeframe. And what that enabled you to do, what that enabled companies to do is collect data once and send it to multiple destinations uh, downstream. So instead of the one-to-one tag -one connection, you now had one-to-many uh, tag connection. Now, when Rudderstack, uh, when our founder, uh, Sumida uh, Mitra, was um, at a different company, he was essentially building a customer data platform internally and realized that solutions uh, that existed at the time did not solve the use case uh, that he was looking for. Uh, and essentially, he saw a market opportunity to re-envision what a customer data platform was, taking advantage of the major developments that had happened since 2015. One important one uh, is the rise of uh, data lakes and data warehouses, right, that decouple storage and compute. What that enables uh, companies to do is to have a way to store the operational data uh, and uh, to essentially turn their warehouse of data lake into the single source of truth. Now, when building Rudderstack, uh, the question was, how do you build a product, a customer data platform in this new age when uh, companies are using their warehouse as a central source of truth? And uh, essentially the difference uh, between the traditional ones is that while the traditional ones stored data in their own ecosystem, right, that created a, a data silo separate from the warehouse where companies were already moving to. Rudderstack was built to work with uh, your warehouse on data lake. So essentially, instead of storing data, it collects data, sends it to your warehouse for your teams to model that data and then activate it out of your warehouse. So that's where the warehouse native concept uh, comes in, where instead of having a traditional CDP that's storing data, hiding it behind a UI and not providing access to the data engineers to that data, we're doing that with the warehouse at the center of the customer data platform. At the center, got it. Can you explain or compare contrast a packaged customer data platform or CDP against composable CDPs, DIY builds? Help us understand the differences there and really the, the unique value drivers for Rudderstack. Absolutely, I would look at uh, kind of uh, um, the framework I would use is how hard is it to, to get value from a, a specific um, uh, CDP and um, 
on the left hand side, uh, the hardest to do is DIY, is building that your entire infrastructure in house, right? That's the hardest to get off the ground. You need, um, you know, potentially dozens of engineers over a long period of time. On the other hand, you have packaged CDPs. Packaged CDPs, they essentially have all of the different components uh, to deliver on a customer data platform. The different components that I mentioned earlier is data collection, data unification, and data activation. That's a packaged uh, CDP. So one solution that handles all of those three. And then in the middle, you have this composable uh, CDP, which is essentially having point solutions for each of those steps, right? You have one vendor that does uh, data collection, you have another vendor that does uh, data unification, and then another vendor that does um, uh, activation or reverse CPL, right? So in, in especially in this uh, micro environment, what you're seeing is point solutions don't work anymore, right? Companies are looking to optimize their data investments, they're looking to reduce cost. And so when they look at the difference between a composable CDP where you have to stitch together three or four different tools to accomplish what a CDP does, that became that becomes uh, cost prohibitive, both from a hard cost perspective and a soft cost perspective. The hard cost is you have to pay, you know, three or four different vendors, right? Each of them is making a margin on whatever they're charging. Two, uh, you have soft costs around uh, the engineering cost that it takes to stitch all of those tools together to make sure that they can speak to each other. Uh, that takes engineering time, right? And then three, you just have the opportunity cost. The time that you're spending integrating all of these tools is time that's spent on non-value added tasks, right? You want your data engineers focusing on delivering delightful customer experiences, whether it's, uh, you know, running personalized marketing campaigns, um, you know, sending, uh, you know, highly personalized uh, product recommendations, right? Now enter the package CDP, right? And there's kind of two flavors to it. There's a traditional CDP that we talked about earlier, which in this case, uh, you do have the downside of store, they store your data. You're also storing your data and paying for storage in your own data lake or warehouse. So from a cost perspective, the traditional CDPs, uh, you have the, you know, you're essentially paying uh, for storage, right? You're paying them to store your data. The data is hidden behind a, a, a UI and you're essentially creating a data silo separate from uh, your warehouse. Now, the warehouse native CDP is, is a, a different flavor of the package CDP. And uh, what it does is that, and that's essentially what Rutherford does, it, it has all of the three components that make up a CDP, right? You've got the data collection, um, and then you also have the data unification. So essentially building identity resolution in your warehouse, where, for example, you can tie together uh, the entire customer journey. And then you have the activation, right? Once you've done the modeling in your warehouse, you need to do something with that data. The way you get value from your data, the way you get value from your warehouse investment is, you know, unlocking use cases that drive the revenue, right? And that's the activation piece. So having all of these three components uh, form part of the package CDP. And what we're seeing is that companies are moving more towards that package CDP uh, model and away from, you know, stitching together many different tools um, to accomplish the same task. You talked about customer experience, and as we and I, as I made a joke a few minutes ago, it's it's uh, it's all the rage. It's we all expect to have a great customer experience, whether we're dealing with uh, another business, uh, a consumer application, uh, a, a, you know, we're getting a ride share. Talk about the customer experience that RiderStack enables and how that really gives competitive advantages to your customers. Absolutely. So the way I think about, you know, customers have, um, you know, they've elevated uh, their expectations in terms of what they mean by a delightful customer experience. Uh, one simple example uh, that's actually fairly uh, complicated, depending on your tech stack uh, to unlock is having, um, you know, personalized experience, right? So the example is you have a personalized offer uh, based off of your next product to buy, right? Or uh, you have a, a you know a, a coupon that encourages you to uh, to make a, a second purchase, right? Now to deliver that experience, there's actually a lot that goes into it, right? The first step is you need to uh, ensure that you have all of the customer data touch points. You you're collecting data from all of those, right? Whether you know somebody purchases a product from an e your e-commerce website. Uh, and then, you know, a few days later goes to, to a store and purchases, you know, a different product from the store, 
right? It's a natural that has to stitch those two together to identify this customer purchase a product online and then went uh, to the store a few weeks later and purchased another product, right? Without stitching together, so the, the first piece is collecting all of that data and sending it to your warehouse. Once that data is in your warehouse, you need to stitch that together. You need to uh, perform uh, identity resolution to be able to resolve these two transactions under one customer, right? Once you have that uh, full uh, customer profile in your warehouse, uh, that's a unification piece, you can now, um, you know, um, you can now build ML or AI models to, for example, determine what's the third product, what's the next product to buy, given this customer has purchased two products, one online, one at retail, right? What's the third product that they, that they would need based off of, you know, some uh, deterministic or some um, probabilistic modeling. Now, once you calculate that, right, you need to now have a touch point with the customer where you're sending an email with, you know, 20% off coupon to buy this third product or a product recommendation that you're able to deliver when that customer comes back, you know, uh, to, to the website or logs into the, the, the e-commerce platform on the app, right? That is an end-to-end -end customer experience that's very difficult to deliver with, uh, if you have incomplete data, if you have inconsistent data, um, you know, across, across your tech stack. Well, what you described is a challenging problem to solve. It's also what we expect. We, there has to be personalized experience, has to be relevant offers. Don't offer me something I've already bought. I want you to know what I'm coming back for and be able to predict that. Um, and that's kind of the, the auto magic behind, you know, optimized customer data platforms. I understand though that there are three costs that companies should need to consider when they're selecting a customer data platform. Can you walk me through those three costs that people really need to be considering? Absolutely, and I, I touched on this uh, earlier. Uh, I would say there's the cost that you see upfront, which is the vendor cost. How much are you paying in your, you know, your contract with your SaaS vendor? That is the uh, that is the you know what's most transparent. That's why I call it a hard cost, right? It's an upfront cost. You know, you're paying you know so many thousand dollars to get a a, a tool, right? That's that's the first one. Now, that's only a small piece of the entire. Um, uh, cost, right? Once you've purchased a tool, you need to implement it, right? You need to spend engineering hours to make sure that it's implemented, that it's getting uh, the data that you needed to get uh, in the format that you need that 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 data in, right? That's a non-trivial exercise. Requires, uh, you know, engineers that you know make hundreds of thousands of dollars and spending their time stitching together, uh, you know, different tooling across uh, your entire stack. And then the third, uh, the third component is when they're doing this implementation work, right? That's taking away from um, taking away from value added activities, right? For example, building, you know, um, you know, highly, uh, you know, performance uh, ML models uh, to determine, you know, churn risk and and ensuring that we can save customers that are that are at risk of churning, right? So any hour that you know your data team is spending stitching tools together, reconciling different data schemas is time spent away from driving uh, revenue growth, right? And which is which goes back to the, the distinction between a warehouse native package CDP like Rudderstack versus a composable approach where you're essentially doing, you know, three or four different implementations before your team can focus on unlocking value uh, from, from those integrations. So you talked about vendor costs, kind of the obvious engineering costs, but there also sounds like there's opportunity costs. Talk a little bit about those because that's that's somewhat hidden that organizations need to really be aware of. Yeah, and this 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 goes down to you know time value of money, right? A dollar today is worth more than a dollar, you know, three months from now, right? So when you think about, you know, why why are companies investing in in uh, in customer data or in the technology around customer data. The reason they're doing that is really to drive revenue growth or increase uh, marketing efficiency or, you know, those, those are really the main, the main two use cases that we see. We can drill down into each of those, but essentially what companies are looking to do, they're looking to unlock value from their data investments uh, to, and the way to do that is drive growth or increase uh, spend efficiency. Doing that today is significantly more valuable than doing that in six months, 
right? So if it's going to take six months to implement and stitch together three or four different tools, you're losing out on uh, six months uh, worth, worth of revenue. And in this environment, um, you know, where, you know, it's a challenging uh, micro environment is a hyper focus on reducing costs, hyper focus on revenue growth. You know, those are trade-offs that, uh, that are uh, difficult to swallow if you have to wait a long time to implement and get value from your uh, data investments. So the opportunity costs are, are massive. I mean, you've been talking about impacting bottom line, impacting top line. So then summarize all this, Eric, how does the cloud data warehouse or data lake help to optimize those costs that you talked about that are really clearly there? Yeah, so I would say there's, there's a number of different ways of thinking about it. So one is a lot of companies that we work with already have a cloud uh, data warehouse or a data lake as part of their, their infrastructure, right? Now, they already have it. And, um, you know, the options are, I could, you know, they could either purchase, you know, tools that are parallel to that cloud data warehouse, right? Which means that you're purchasing, you know, for example, a customer data platform that's storing data in their own infrastructure. That's uh, essentially a separate data silo from the, all of the investments that you've made in your data warehouse or, or, or data lake. Right, so it enables uh, the, an investment in your know, cloud data warehouse if done right, and if the center of gravity of all of the data switches to the cloud data warehouse or the data lake, it reduces uh, the um, storage cost. Right, you're you're storing data once instead of multiple different times with the different tools uh, that you have. That's number one. Number two is there's a um, there's a data quality argument to be had as well. Right. If you have data, duplicate data stored in many different tools, in addition to your warehouse, you oftentimes, you could ask the same question off of each of the different data sources that you have or data storage that you have and you get a different answer, right? Which means that your data team has to go back and try and reconcile why is why am I getting different answers from my data, right? Having a well-implemented cloud data warehouse or data lake as a center of your data strategy enables you to uh, essentially not deal with data quality problems that create a lot of churn uh, within the team to figure out why data is inconsistent, right? So by ensuring you have, um, you know, data quality, uh, data governance reduces the amount of time teams spend, you know, running around trying to figure out what is the actual source of truth uh, when it should be your warehouse or data lake. Data governance, data quality, data privacy is so important. So Eric, take us home here. You must have a handful or more of favorite customer stories that you think really shines the light on the value that Reuters Jack is delivering. Share an example with me. Absolutely. So, so I'll, I'll start off by saying we have you know hundreds of customers who have grown significantly over the last over the last three years, and we're seeing an acceleration of that growth. Uh, you know, due to the macro environment, folks are uh, fo uh, focused on cost and efficiency. And um, but if I were to pick one. Um, um, we do have uh, one of my favorite stories, um, a large uh, furniture retailer uh, that's publicly traded. Um, they um, were essentially working with one of the traditional uh, CDPs um, and they were unable to get value from that investment, right? They had spent you know, six or so months trying to implement the tool and they're not getting um, it fully implemented for a number of different reasons. And uh, they were looking for an alternative. Right, because the the integration cost, the engineering cost, uh, time spent on trying to integrate and building out their customer data stack with the traditional CDP just didn't work. Given that they wanted to reduce the storage cost, they wanted to make sure that there was data quality and data governance across the board. It it, it did not work. That's the first the first piece. Second piece is they were looking to get a full customer three hundred and sixty view of their customer, so they didn't want to be limited to you know the handful of data sources that this traditional uh, CDP uh, provider had, right? So they looked at, they, they came to Rutherstack and they realized one, there's a faster time to implementation, right? Instead of, you know, six months and not making progress, uh, they were able to get up and running in, in a matter of weeks. And then number two, they could actually get customer, uh, custom integrations built, right? You know, Rutherstack is an accessible platform. Uh, it's fully flexible and it works around your cloud data warehouse. Which means if there's a there's a new data source, right? You can, um, you know, build a custom integration um, either using Rutherstack or once the data is in your warehouse, you can actually um, 
you know, use our uh, identity resolution features to uh, build that customer 360 so that you have rich customer data that you can then enrich and unlock value uh, from that data. So they were able to uh, reduce cost uh, from a vendor standpoint, reduce cost from a, a data storage standpoint by migrating all of their workloads to the data warehouse that they had already. And then also accelerate time to value, right? Instead of spending six months on integration, they are able to get up and running in, in, uh, in a matter of weeks, two to three weeks, right? So that's an example of where they were able to reduce cost and get uh, accelerate time to value uh, by using a warehouse native CDP uh, that runs that is. Yeah, and getting that customer at 360, which is really the pot of gold at the end of a rainbow for any kind of business. I know all of the vendors that have that 360 on me, Works every time. Eric, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE and talking to us as part of the AWS Startup Showcase Analytics and Cost Optimization. We really appreciate your insights and learning more about RiderStack. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you so much, Lisa. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. We want to thank you for watching and say keep it right here for more action on theCUBE, your leader in live tech coverage.